Great to have you back once again on The Breakfast here on PLUS TV Africa. Our next conversation is going to be on the National Association of Resident Doctors, who of course uh, have announced a strike you know, action starting from today. And this is with the failure of the government to respond to their demands after 113 days uh, notice was given. They, of course, uh, had mentioned the memorandum of action that was signed by the federal government, you know, which, of course, once again has, not, has been ignored. We're speaking this morning with uh, the second vice president, NARD, uh, Dr. Chukujuma Ejofo, who's uh, joining us from Enugu. Good morning, Dr. Ejofo. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's start with um, the details of the memorandum of understanding um, and how far the federal government was able to go with uh, with those the memorandum of action. I beg your pardon. Uh, was there any of these details that the federal government actually did, um, you know, uh, you know, do as they promised? Okay. Um, quite unfortunately, um, the federal government has not kept to any of the provinces, our MOU has been clear. It's been the same thing for many years. And uh, it's talking about welfare of doctors in Nigeria, resident doctors in Nigeria. By resident doctors, I mean resident doctors, house officers, and medical officers below the rank of principal medical officers, and those not in residence. And so far, the federal government has unfortunately not kept to even one of our uh, agreements and understanding. And um, we are forced to come here again to tell Nigerians uh, this is a peculiar situation. And um, it's unfortunate again that hospitals will be shut down because the government does not want to take these responsibilities serious. Health is wealth, you see, but as I said, uh, they have other plans. And we're back here again. Dr. Ejiofo, <laughs> I, I, I want us to um, get clarity as to or, you know, what role the announcement by the Lagos State Government to stop the enrollment of interns into the NHIS you know, has to do with the strike? Because the papers are reporting that that's what triggered the strike. Is that so? That is not true. The Lagos State uh, Government announcement was um, that of removing house officers from the civil service scheme. And um, that, is, that should not happen. We've even had where they want to give um, proper doctors 15,000 naira. And we asked ourselves, what, what exactly is the minimum wage all about? When you want to pay a doctor 15,000 naira for working, for a month. There are so many things. People are crazy in Nigeria. And, uh, I don't know why they just want problems up and down. And, uh, so what are the demands of the National Association of Resident Doctors for these um, staff to be paid the minimum wage of 30,000 naira or higher? And if higher, what exactly are you looking at? No, on that, we haven't ever started discussion with the but this is, just, this is just a new development. Um, our demands as, um, as an institution called NAD um, has always been about our welfare, about the medical residence training program, and making sure that the act itself, which is a law in Nigeria, is domesticated. We're also trying to make sure that we have debt and service insurance also trying to upgrade the hazard allowance, which has been 5,000 naira for more than a decade right now. It's easy for one to appropriate a 30, 30 billion naira plus for a leaky roof in Abuja, in that of assembly. But bring out some little money and pay doctors for the Nigeria, it's a problem. It's so, not frustrating. And we're talking about brain drain in Nigeria. Which doctor? Would you pay 15,000 naira in Lagos State and you want to stay in Nigeria? We don't have a brain drain anymore. We have a brain fog. And it's so annoying that I know that one day in this country, people will wake up and you will not see doctors in Nigeria. House, house is now being 
offered in the United Kingdom. Where after a year of training, they are GMC certified. But business with our young men and women, our young graduates who are doctors, have coming back to their field. Traveling abroad for any doctor is not easy. You're leaving friends and family. You can't spend Christmas with your family. Your parents die, you can't even come for their burial at times. It's not as if it's easy to travel. Look, yeah, I, I wanted to ask, you know, in, in the 113 days, you know, since the strike was called off, was there any interaction? You know, was there any reminders sent to the Nigerian government to let them know that none of their promises have been fulfilled? Um, the, the one of the papers this morning is saying that the government is not aware of any strike notice even from the NARD. So have there been interactions in between that were also ignored, just to remind the government that they haven't fulfilled any of the promises in the memorandum of action that was signed? It's quite a pity that um, adults, the those in government, have actually lied, flatly lied. There have been series of a series of opportunities. I was able to attend them the last one. Less than two weeks with the president of that, the first vice president, and um, Dr. Julian Ojemo. And we talked at length, you know, so maybe before a time, for example, just when the strike happened, that it was discovered that the medical registration fund had not been budgeted. We seem to be having uh, challenges with the clarity of uh, picture and sound there from Dr. Ejofo. Uh, I hope that we can quickly reconnect with him, um, you know, as, as we keep up with the, this conversation. From what he's saying, there have been reminders. There have been, you know, um, interactions with the NARD leadership and the federal government over time, um, and still nothing was done. And it's pretty much, you know, the same thing, you know, with ASU, with, you know, SANU, with, you know, you know the Polytechnics, you know, and the trust also. Um, and doctors, you know, it feels like it's the same, you know, modus operandi every time, you know. There's some agreement, the strike is called off or suspended, you know, we wait for two months, three months, and, you know, the strike is called back again because, well, government hasn't been able to fulfill these promises. You know, and it makes you really question, and I hope that we'll be able to speak with, you know, the, um, uh, the government, Nigerian government um, representative here. It makes you really question what the priorities are every time you know, uh, with the Nigerian government. What exactly are our biggest priorities? What are exactly are the things that we, um, as a country, you know, find, you know, really, really important? The doctors need to be paid higher. The doctors deserve higher, you know, hazard allowance. The doctors need better facilities in the hospitals. And this includes, you know, both the federal and at the state level, because there's also certain states that are, that are owing doctors for, you know, between nine to 12 months, um, you know, about four, about three or four states, you know, that are owing doctors. Um, so it's both on the federal and on the state level that these conversations need to be had. What really are the, the priorities um, for the Nigerian government with regards to health care? Dr. Joffa, welcome back. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. Thank you. All right. We apologize. There was uh, some challenges with the clarity there. But go ahead. You know, you were saying that there have been interactions with the NARD and the Nigerian government. Yeah, there have been numerous interactions between the NARD and the Nigerian government, of which the last one was less than two and um, it's all about promises still. This will be done, that should be done, that should be done. And in the long run, it's still nothing. It's, it's more than 100 days since April 1st that the previous strike started. And let us also remember that that strike was called off because a very high ranking person in the government came to us and said, let me try and see how far it could go. And we called off. On that, and because Nigerians were suffering. But we're back there again. And this time around, I think the Nigerian people should ask the government these questions again. Do they want Nigerians to die? Is health not important in a country like ours? Dr. Jofo? Can you hear me, Dr. Jofo? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, can you tell us a bit about the Medical Residency Training Act of 2017? What exactly um, does it say? And why are some states having challenges with domesticating it? 
the Medical Residence Training Act is uh, is is a law that depicts the way the training of doctors should be in Nigeria. Those in residence, it I mean, it's it's a page for page booklet that that explains the workings of the training. And this was necessary because there was so much irregularity in this particular aspect of medical training in Nigeria. So uh, the, the leaders of doctors in Nigeria, with a lot of medical doctors, called for this act. And this was drawn up, and this has been signed into law. Like I said um, in March, this is a law of the federal government. Why can't the law be okay? Why can't this? We, we are at a lot of words at times when you see things go awry and um, we don't know what, what next to do, even if it's just a law which is not being obeyed by the same government that ties it into law. Exactly. Dr. Ejofor, is it that the, the, the requirements there, you know, in that act, you know, are too, are too much or, you know, too challenging for the states to implement? Because I'm trying to find out why exactly or what exactly is the challenge with domesticating that act that simply says that resident doctors should be treated better. Um, it's actually an issue for us. Um, first of all, there's a dichotomy between the federal um, government doctor and the state government doctor. But this law is for both wings of the government. And it should be domesticated for doctors to be able to you know, work with that justification that they require. But for whatever reason, you have you have a lot of states being owed more than 18 months' salary. It even goes beyond that because a lot of doctors being owed pension later in life. These are the problems, but um, right. we still don't understand what really is obtainable in Nigeria. Well, Dr. Jaffo. That's the doctors and why we are. That is bad. Yeah, we're currently, of course, um, I guess, you know, in a, a third wave of uh, COVID-19. Um, Lagos recorded 519 um, uh, cases uh, yesterday, I believe. Or, um, and so it, it, it should be scary for a lot of people uh, with regards to the health you know, crisis that Nigeria might be getting into if the third wave is not properly managed. What is the fate of people that might be falling ill this period. Is there any help that they can still get in the hospitals while the uh, resident doctors are on strike? Um, like I had earlier said, in, there's no good time for that time. So, and um, we are still part of the people. Even though as doctors don't get the best medical attention from our hospitals. Which we've been crying about for many, many years now, and um, I think I think our national leaders need to look at the pledge, the national pledge, and actually read it and invite it. You don't come and say I pledge Nigeria, my country, to be faithful well and others to serve Nigeria. They are not serving Nigeria. Nigerians are suffering. Doctors are suffering. The people will still suffer. We as doctors, we're still part of the people. Our parents are still part of the people. So it's, it's, it's confusing at times when um, there's that lack of response and, uh, from the government. And we keep wondering why. Is it that they, do they really want people to die? Or anything? I don't understand this. Okay. That's um... where we are right now. This strike is in definitely. It's total, it's indefinite. Um, the government is, and, and it was preventable right from the very start. Right from the very start. Totally preventable. But you see where we are. Okay, so what do you think the doctors might be feeling right now, seeing that they gave ample time, 113 days, for the government to take action, but they didn't? So, how do you think you know, the doctors might be taking it? Well, um, we actually, for me as a person, I can't speak for the other person, but there's that, um, there's that confusion 
as to what I'm, I'm still doing in Nigeria, first of all. But I'm here because I'm because and I want things to work. And the, the sense of betrayal is just abysmal. And um, the, the thought of having a loved one die because the government has not do the needful is a scary thing. My mother is here in Enugu. She's above 70. If she should contract the COVID now, what happened? Lots of doctors have lost their parents to COVID the last week. It's clear, it's clear and present danger that the government does not seem to want to understand. Nobody involves critical stakeholders like that in policy formation. How can someone say a doctor should earn 15,000 naira in this country? Let's ask ourselves questions. Nigeria should be very angry at this point in time. We are tired of being angry. We've been, we've cajoled, we've done everything we have to do. And we're still doing that. And now we're on strike once more. So what would it take for NAD to call off the strike? I mean, you tried it before, you went on a strike, there were discussions, the government, you know, breached those, um, you know, what they signed, the MOA, and now you're back on strike. So what would it take for Anarch to call off the strike? Um, quite unfortunately, um, the decision to go on strike, and we just concluded the um, National Institute Council meeting, was quite unanimous. And um, as a National Officers uh, Committee, we have been mandated that everything that we have asked for for years must be fulfilled. We're not even so anxious to even talk to anybody right like And that's the truth. Because you say the same thing over and over again to the same people. You cannot do something the same way and expect a different result. It doesn't happen. But, but Dr. Ejofo, I... Dr. Ejofo, we understand where you're coming from, but just to also put this in perspective, um, do you know the people that would suffer? Because we're talking about ordinary Nigerians who are just struggling to live above the poverty line and that the politicians whose attention we're trying to get can afford medical care out of the country. So how do you think this strike will really you know, affect everyday Nigerians? Well, bear in mind that um, I am also and everyday Nigerian like you are, and, and uh, other doctors in this country are also everyday Nigerians like the rest of the people are, it is something that is affecting all of us equally. Nigerians have to speak up, they have to get up, they have to write, they have to go on air. It's not whatever doctors go on strike. They say, uh, ah, you're a doctor, you took a food. So it's, yes. We all took votes, and we said Nigeria pledge every morning. We will lend that as children. Our leader said Nigeria pledge every morning. We're not the only ones that took votes. Everybody took a vote to make sure this country works. Let everybody put his or her hands down and get this country to work. Health is wealth. Without health, a dead man will be asking about salary. A dead man cannot be on TV. We have to fix the health system in this country together. And that is where you have to come out. Even you reporters in the studio. You have to speak up. Dr. Everybody has to be on board. Dr. Choko Jamma Ejiofor, second vice president, NARD. Thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. Thank we you. We hope that there is more conversations and the government actually steps up to, the, uh, you know, to the, these discussions and takes action where necessary. Uh, to, of course, prevent uh, further uh, chaos for Nigerians. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And that's where we wrap up the conversation this morning. We hope that we uh, can, of course, uh, bring you uh, further discussions on the APC and, of course, uh, its uh, ward congresses that took place over the weekend um, uh, in later editions of The Breakfast.
For now, it's good, goodbye. And if you missed out on any of these conversations, remember, it's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. And... And um, yes, we also have a new YouTube channel. We can't stop saying that until you subscribe. It's at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Annetta Felix, thanking you for joining us. And I am Osao Gie Ogbawang.